Okay, so we're going to start, uh, we're going to try to do a problem here. Basically, we're going to try to estimate um, how many particles there are in the atmosphere or how much mass there is in the atmosphere. Uh, I was very curious about this, so I thought we could look into this. Yeah, how do we actually do that type of a problem? Well, so mass... Uh, mass is going to be equal to the density of the material times the volume that it's taken up. And so the, uh, the volume is the volume of the atmosphere. Um, atmosphere. And then rho is the density of the atmosphere. Um, atmosphere. And so the question is, what are each of these things? Um, that is a good question. Wow. Uh, so the density of the atmosphere at sea level is really easy. You can just do a Google search of that. Um, so rho is equal to about 1.3 um, kilograms per meter cubed. All right, that's, that's pretty easy. The volume is much more difficult. Um, the volumes quite tricky. First thing we should um, know is some some constants that we're going to actually need. The first um, is like what is the atmosphere made of? Um, so the atmosphere is about 78% N2 which has a mass uh, of 28 AMU and it's roughly uh, 22 percent O2 which has a mass of 32 AMU and when you combine those um, the average mass um, mass average is equal to it's pretty easy to do 28 point times 0 0.78 plus 32 times point uh, 22 which is going to be equal to um, 28.9 AMU. Now, what is an AMU? Well, an AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So one hydrogen proton, one proton weighs or has a mass of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So if the average particle in the atmosphere has a mass of 28.9 AMU, um, then that uh, is equal to 28.9 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms which is going to be equal to 4.79 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. So that is the mass of an average particle in the atmosphere. So it's sort of like a weighted average of like an O2 atom and an N2 atom. Okay, um, and why does that matter? So we're just gonna call that mass of the atmosphere. It's average mass. So why do we need that? Well, the, the way that you can calculate the volume of the atmosphere is that, um, and here's Bitey sticking his head up, uh, the volume of the atmosphere is calculated by basically, let's look at circles. Let's pretend the earth is a, is a flat earth. Uh, and let's say we have uh, this is the Earth here, and this is the radius of the Earth, and then we have the atmosphere. This, and this is going to be the thickness of the atmosphere, uh, which we will call like the height of the atmosphere. I'm using the the um, H for a very specific reason. Um, and so the radius of this is going to be equal to Re plus H. All right, so now in 
atmospheric physics, uh, it's really interesting that when you do, um, when you want to figure out like how uh, many particles there are in like a column of air or something like that, you basically have to integrate um, from the surface, from the surface to infinity, um, the density. But the density varies as a function of z, uh, dz, right? Um, and rho is actually uh, proportional to an exponential, exponential, and as a function of minus z over h. Uh, and h is called the scale height, scale height. If we were to assume the atmosphere is completely constant um, density, okay, bitey, uh, completely constant density, what would that height actually be? Well, so it's, it's this integral, um, and it turns out that it's a really good approximation that the height of the atmosphere is actually equal to h, all right, equals height of the atmosphere. And that's the same as this h right here. Um, and that is the scale height. Uh, and the scale height is equal to kt over mg, where k is Boltzmann's constant, Boltzmann's constant, and that is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd, and the units of Boltzmann's constant is meter squared kilograms per per second squared Kelvin. All right, that is really obvious. Uh, okay, T is the temperature of the atmosphere, and it's a pretty good approximation that the temperature of the atmosphere is roughly 273 Kelvin. Um, G, you all know, is the gravitational constant of the Earth, uh, and that is 9.8 meters per second squared. I should say gravitational acceleration of the Earth. And then M is the average mass of a molecule in the atmosphere. And we just figured that out, which is 4.79 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. All right, so then if we want to finish this, we say that h is equal to kt over mg, which is equal to um, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd times 273 divided by uh, 4.79 times 10 to the minus 26 times 9.8. And that is going to be equal to 8,019 meters which is eight kilometers. So the atmosphere is roughly eight kilometers thick. If you were to collapse the entire atmosphere into something that is constant density with altitude, it would be eight kilometers thick. All right, now what is RE? Um, RE is equal to 6371 kilometers. Uh, which is equal to 6,371,000 uh, meters. All right, so now what is the volume of the atmosphere? Well, the volume of the atmosphere, volume is going to be equal to the volume, well, let's, let's actually draw it over here. So this is going to be the volume of the outer layer and this is the volume uh, of the, oops, inner sphere. That's the volume of the outer sphere right here. And this is the volume of the inter, inner sphere there, right? So the volume of the atmosphere is simply the volume of the outer sphere minus the volume of the inner sphere, okay? Um, and that's how you get the volume of the shell between, that is the atmosphere, all right? Uh, and so that volume is the volume of the sphere 
is four thirds pi um, r outer cubed minus r inner cubed. That's the volume of a sphere, okay? Or the shell, uh, two spheres. All right, so we have four thirds pi r outer is going to be equal to six, three, seven, one, um, o, o, o plus 8,019 cubed minus 6371 0000, put some commas in there, cubed. All right, now if we do some math here, this is going to be equal to a very big number, 2.5895666. Times 10 to the 20th. This is going to be equal to another big number, which is 2.595743 times 10 to the 20th. You subtract those numbers and you get 4 thirds pi times 9.77 times 10 to the 17th and that is going to be in <clears throat> meters cubed, which is 4.095 times 10 to the 18th meters cubed. That is the volume of the atmosphere. Equals volume of the atmosphere. Okay, we are one step closer to actually figuring out the mass of the atmosphere and the number of particles in the atmosphere. All right, so we had an original formula, which is way up here. The mass of the atmosphere is equal to rho, which is just 1.3 kilograms per meter cubed, times V, the volume of the atmosphere. We just figured out the volume of the atmosphere. So then the mass is actually really easy to calculate. The mass of the atmosphere is going to be equal to 1.3 kilograms uh, per meter cubed times 4.095 times 10 to the 18 meters cubed, which is going to be equal to 5.324 times 10 to the 18 kilograms. That is the mass of the atmosphere. All right. Now, this is a pretty meaningless number. Um, I thought I would write it out uh, to make it a little bit clearer what it is. So that is five, three, two, four, comma, zero, 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 three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen kilograms. That is a rather large number, uh, but. How big is it? Well, it turns out that like the Empire State Building, um, I looked up the Empire State Building and it is, you know, down around this big. And so it's not really that comparable at all. And so then I started looking for astronomical bodies and the moon is like way, way, way heavier than this. So like there's not much like between um, like the Empire State Building and the moon, there's not very much. So I looked at other things. Um, and what I des decided to do is to, to say, like, if this thing were a um, an asteroid, how big of an asteroid would this actually be? Like, you take a sphere of granite, how big would a sphere of granite have to be in order to be the mass of the atmosphere? I thought that that might be interesting. Um, I'm not necessarily certain it's useful, but maybe interesting. All right, so granite um, has a mass density, rho, which is equal to 2,691 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, so what does that mean? Well. So how many meters cubed would it then be? 
Well, so it's really easy. We just are gonna do exactly the opposite of basically what we just did. Um, and so we know that the volume is going to be equal to the uh, mass divided by the mass density, which is going to be 5.324 times 10 to the 18 kilograms divided by 2,691 kilograms per meter cubed, uh, which is equal to 1.978 uh, times 10 to the 15 meters cubed. All right, that's still a big number. Like, what, what does that mean? Well, volume, uh, I don't care about volume. What I really care about is what is the radius of this thing? Uh, so we know that the volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed, and we're looking for r. r is going to be equal to the cubed root of uh, volume times three divided by four pi. And so if we have the volume, this is the cubed root of 1.978 times 10 to the 15th, times three divided by four times pi. And you do that and you come up with 78 kilometers. R is equal to 78 kilometers. All right, Whew. Uh, so if an asteroid that was 78 kilometers in size came by the Earth, then that would be approximately the same mass as our entire atmosphere. So that's that's pretty big. That is really big. Uh, I had no idea that the atmosphere is actually that heavy. Uh, it's really gigantic. Um, to finish this thing off, then let's actually, ooh, let's zoom in on this blank thing. Now the original question was how many particles are there in the atmosphere? And the problem with that is that it's gonna be so astronomically large that it just is meaningless. Let's do it anyways, uh, just for the heck of it. So the number of particles is going to be equal to um, the 5.324 times 10 to the 18th kilograms. And then what do we divide that by? Well, we divide that by the average mass of a particle. And we already calculated the average mass of the particle, which is right here. Uh, so the average mass of the particle is 4.79 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms per particle. You can see right away that this 18 and this minus 26, that is going to give us a really, really big number. 1.11 times 10 to the 44th particles. That's the number of particles in the atmosphere. 10 to the 44th, that's a really big number. That is the answer that we want. Um, I found the more fascinating thing is the um, size of an asteroid that would come and hit the Earth. Uh, like what is the equivalent mass of an asteroid versus the, um, or size of an asteroid versus the atmospheric mass. Um, one thing that I thought about doing then is actually calculating how much mass there is of carbon uh, in the atmosphere because that's pretty relevant um, to the, um, uh, to the modern day calamity, which is known as um, climate change. Uh, so I think I will stop the video here, but then make another video um, later, which talks about the mass of carbon and how much the mass of carbon is actually increasing every year. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this.